Hello everybody. So I recently released a mod with some batteries in it. And these batteries are useful, but most people do not have battery management scripts. I figured I'd give you mine. Her name is Freya and she's pretty good. I've spent the last couple of hours polishing her up so that she's ready for public release. And now she is. You can see that here I've got a ship that is just batteries. It has no reactors at all. It's a pretty good ship. Uh, it can drill real fast and it can discard rock automatically. So it's quite nice. But as you can see, it's got large engines on the back and you don't have any reactors aboard. Well, obviously you've got to use that capacitor. But capacitors run out real fast. So what happens is Freya will turn the capacitor on when you use your engine, but she'll charge it up again when you are not using your engine. So if we were to go ahead and hit forward here, we'll get our full performance because she'll free up that capacitor and let it actually uh, give us the power it needs. And you can see that we are quite fast. But we do start to run low on that capacitor. It, um, it is not something that has an infinite amount of charge. And now she's going to charge it back up. We used up almost half of it. She'll charge it up in sips because, as you can see, our, re our power usage keeps floating above 100. So that's a sip. She takes a sip and then she turns it back off. The capacitor takes in energy very, very fast. So it's pretty common for your power usage to go above 100. That doesn't mean something is wrong. It means she's taking a sip of power. So here is our base. Oh, I better turn off our, our ejectors. And our base is a, uh, a simple refinery vessel. It only has four small reactors and some solar wings, so that's not really enough to have it move around. That's barely enough to keep it operating. However, it does have plenty of batteries. It has two batteries, a fuel cell, and a, um, a capacitor, and it can also hijack the batteries, fuel cells, and capacitors on the small ship. So all in all, it works pretty well. Yoink and blonk. Blonk, there we go. Now we're parked. And I'm going to go ahead and go inside and show you what it's all about. This is the living space. This is vanilla, aside from my mod, so that's why uh, it's so barren. Over here you have a readout of exactly what Freya is doing, and you can see that when you get more batteries, she gets more aggressive as to which batteries are charging, which batteries aren't, and she gets along well whether there are reactors or not. And here's a cool little feature. Let's go over into our inventory here and pull up a reactor. Oh well, that's not going to work because it's going to fill there. That'll work. So it'll tell you when a reactor stops producing or is broken or otherwise is not working. And that's nice, especially if you've got you know hundreds of reactors. So let's go ahead and fill that reactor back up. There you go. I have her running at one hit per second. That is generally the rate I recommend, but you can run her every tick if you'd like. Let me go ahead and show you some of her features. Freya is super easy to set up. Just like M Master's mod, all you need to do is get a programmable block and a timer. You put Freya in the block and then you have the timer. The timer calls itself and Freya. And that's it. It doesn't matter. You don't have to send an argument to Freya. Uh, Freya does not. Freya at the moment ignores arguments. But there are some pieces of Freya that might be worth discussing. Because when you put the code in, you get a couple of things that you can change. You can change her name, you can change where she looks to put her status, where she looks to put her log, and whether or not she's running every tick. If you decide to not have a log or a status screen, that's fine. She'll run completely fine with no outputs at all. But if you do decide that you want to use a status screen, she'll look for a status screen with this name or a log screen with this name. So if we pop over here, you can see that this is named status. One of the gotchas here, this is part of a large set of AIs. And therefore, she'll actually look down here at the public title. If the public title is either public title or her name, she'll understand that that's a screen she's allowed to print to. But if you change it to something else, uh, like say the name of another AI, she would not print to it. And that allows a large number of AI to output to the same screen depending on what you've selected in the Ratatosk menu. That part's not yet ready for public consumption, but I thought you might want to know. So if you're reusing a screen from, screen from M Master's mod or something, you're going to want to change the title to her name or to uh, uh, or to program or to uh, the default.
The other thing to consider, if you have multiple Freyas running on multiple ships and you plan to dock them together, you're going to want to change the name of the status screen because all of the Freyas will look for the same status screen and they'll say, okay, well, I'm going to write to it. And then the other one will be like, no, I'm going to write to it. And they'll all try and write to one of those screens and ignore all of the others. So in this case, I've set my miner up to look for status 2. And status 2 is, of course, the name of this. And that way they get along well. So I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to Freya. She's super easy to use and uh, quite powerful if you are using batteries. I don't think I mentioned this, but she'll also try and keep your oxygen above 90% but below 100% so that you can depressurize your airlocks. Uh, I was very, very annoyed by the fact that I couldn't depressurize my airlocks because my storage was always full. That's that. There will be a link to Freya as an independent script down below, or you can uh, get this whole world and play with it if you'd like. If you do use Freya, go ahead and send me a screenshot or a blueprint or something. I'd love to see uh, how it all works out for you.